This Week on Oklahoma Horizon. Well, we are in McAllister, Oklahoma, the county seat of Pittsburgh County and the largest town in the Choctaw Nation of Oklahoma. Today, we're going to examine what makes this town go. Andy Barr takes us to the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant where essentially all of the bombs used by the U.S. military are made. The geographic location near the center of the United States was important not only for infrastructure in terms of road and rail shipment, but also being able to distribute to, to each of the east and west coasts. We will attend an event and find out why residents here say they're now work ready. I really think it makes a difference, it truly does, and I think that having our students take it while they're here, it exposes them to that and the importance to our community to develop the skills that they need to become employable in our community. Courtney Dehoff drops in on a favorite haunt for locals and anyone else with a taste for the vine. We are a destination. We are definitely a destination. We have wind down Fridays on Friday nights with local entertainment. Actually, our mayor is one of our house groups that comes in. Elisa Hines will tell us how Oklahoma's Choctaw Nation became our country's leading Native American defense contractor. It's about $30 million worth of hardware out of this location. Next year, we're projecting over $50 million a year. Keela Kellen will visit a local manufacturer that lake enthusiasts should certainly appreciate. We design, manufacture, and install marinas around the country. And we'll step inside a factory that makes a leisurely afternoon on a park bench all the more comfortable. Stay with us for Oklahoma Horizon. Oklahoma Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education. Oklahoma's investment in career tech provides more than nationally recognized technology education and training. It produces solid financial returns for the state's economic future. Oklahoma Career Tech, elevating our economy. And the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. And now, here's your host, Rob McClendon. Hello everyone, as you can see we are out of the studio and I'm standing in front of beautiful McAllister, Oklahoma, located 90 miles south of Tulsa, but 120 miles southeast of Oklahoma City. This hometown friendly city of McAllister is a major trade center for southeast Oklahoma and is one of the state's oldest communities. Now, unique attractions include the beautiful and very historic McAllister Scottish Rite Masonic Temple and the Oklahoma State Penitentiary, believe it or not, which has a museum that chronicles famous inmates, early chain gangs, and even some prison escapes. But today, we are going to focus on the business of McAllister, and when it comes to jobs, no place has a bigger impact than the local Army ammunition plant. Our Andy Barth takes us there. Countless hours on the production line, and it all comes down to an explosion. The men and women of the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant work tirelessly to produce the best and most dangerous bombs in the business. Uh, the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant is a manufacturing facility dedicated to providing ammunition and missile components to the Department of Defense. Brian Lott is the Director of Ammunition Operations. Um, the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant is the largest employer in southeastern Oklahoma. We have an annual economic impact of over $154 million. And with over 1,500 employees building over 20 different types of explosive devices, Lott says location is key. The geographic location near the center of the United States was important not only for infrastructure in terms of road and rail shipment, but also being able to distribute to, to each of the east and west coasts. Aside from building every size and shape of bomb, the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant has its own unique way of recycling. We also have an active ammunition demilitarization program where we remove obsolete and unserviceable ammunition and ammunition items from the defense inventory. We do that primarily through resource recovery, recycling, and reutilization programs. Now, these recycling programs aren't your typical paper or plastic and should never be tried at home. One of our unique recycling programs is that for TNT. With our TNT recycling program, we're able to recover TNT from obsolete and unserviceable ammunition items and recertify that for reuse in new ammunition production items. 
and quality products come from a quality crew that Lott says he has in McAllister. The strength of the McAllister Army Ammunition Plant is the quality of our workforce. We have a dedicated workforce focused on meeting the needs of our warfighters throughout the world. And quality is key when serving our country's finest. Producing a quality product is critical for us at McAllister. All of our processes meet rigorous quality standards. And standards are extra important for Army mom and plant employee Dean Black. With her children's blue stars around her neck, Black says everyone here takes their job seriously. That's what they're depending on to save their lives over there. Um, if they get into a firefight, then they need what we produce to take care of the enemy. And it needs to be workable and dependable. Black has been with the plan for over 30 years and says she strongly believes in what they're doing for our men and women in uniform. Only knowing that you know, you're working at a place where it is producing something that is taking care of our military. It's important that our warfighters receive quality products. They need to know that what we produce is going to be the right item. We're going to produce it on time and it's going to perform as expected. You're watching Oklahoma Horizon, featuring some of the good things that are happening in the great state of Oklahoma. Well, industry here in McAllister is certainly not alone in needing the right employees for the right job, which is why they decided to do a little celebrating when McAllister earned the official designation of a work-ready city. In southeastern Oklahoma, Pan Pacific Products is stacking up to be a leader in the forest products industry company on the cutting edge that for years struggled with a high employee turnover rate. Cheryl Fortner is the human resource manager for Pan Pacific and says that finding good employees wasn't always easy. We in the past had had employees who had a hard time accomplishing the work that we needed done on the chop saws uh, due to being maybe deficient in some math skills, reading skills, locating information skills. Issues that are no longer worrisome thanks to something called work keys, a work ready test and certification process that helps both employees and employers. In 2011, we went from an 89% turnover to 11% turnover last year. Work Keys has made a huge difference in our facility. Which is why representatives from both industry and education, along with state leaders, came to the Kayamichi Tech Center in McAllister to mark this area's entry into the largest Work Keys region in the state. Lieutenant Governor Todd Lamb says with 97% of Oklahomans employed by small business, skills training is essential to our growing economy. When I talk to small businesses in state and out of state, they talk about a number of issues. Uh, one of the issues they talk about is workforce development. You have to make sure that, that the workforce is well educated and well trained. And this certification, this recertification in southeast Oklahoma is important. Not just 13 counties like it once was, 15 counties. The first county, that, that significant 15 county uh, certification, first time it's been done in Oklahoma. That's because by completing a work keys assessment, job seekers have the ability to show potential employers exactly what they can do. And state leaders have another tool to attract new industry. When I travel out of state or the governor travels out of state, people know that we're fairly subjective about our home state. So of course we're gonna brag on them. But when we can point to a certification I mean, this certification is happened by, by driving through a service, and you get, you, get a, you get a certificate thrown at you as you drive through the drive through You have to qualify. There's so much you have to do, so many passing grades, so many passing students, so much partnerships. This is an objective standard, a very high threshold of an, of an objective standard that has to be met. And meeting that standard can mean the difference in getting the job. At Kaimichi Technology Center, both students and teachers have all taken the test. Emily Stone teaches advanced mathematics. I took the test because it's just, it helps instructors learn what our students are going through because we test all of our students. And so it gives us a tool to tell exactly what level we are in math, what level we are in reading, what level we are in locating information, and then it, it actually breaks it down and, and shows an employer what our strengths and weaknesses are. In fact, the entire Kaimichi Technology Center District now requires its employees and future employees 
to be WorkKey certified. April Murray is the McAllister campus director. I really think it makes a difference. It truly does. And I think that having our students take it while they're here, it exposes them to that and the importance to our community to develop the skills that they need to become employable in our community. That gives local industry proof positive that those applying for the job can do the job. Still to come on Oklahoma Horizon, we kick back at the Whispering Meadows Winery. But first, Choctaw defense. Well, up next on our trip to McAllister, our Lisa Hines takes us to the leading Native American defense manufacturer in the nation, Choctaw Defense, that just earned a $25 million federal contract. Each piece is cut with precision. All of our machining operations happen in McAllister. Stephen Benefield is the managing officer for Choctaw Defense, a manufacturing company helping support our nation's military. This year we'll be uh, producing about $30 million worth of hardware out of this location. Next year we're projecting over $50 million a year. And being a defense contractor, all defense contractors live contract to contract. Building vehicles for those who are first on the scene. We support the uh, Marines medium tactical vehicle uh, we build a family of trailers that go with these. Uh, these. It's the largest contract we've had to date. And Stephen says to do so, you have to be efficient. One thing that uh, we have really had a lot of success with is Oklahoma's Manufacturing Alliance on their lean initiatives that they've done, and that is through Career Tech. And uh, I think it's one of the most valuable programs that, uh, that I've seen a state-funded program or a federally-funded program do that actually that has really done more for us than, than any program we've ever worked with. Kevin Priddle is the former mayor of McAllister and says Choctaw Defense is good for the entire community. It's very beneficial to us because of the uh, employment that they provide to our area and the, uh, the training and increased usage of our personnel in the area as well. And that's important to Stephen. We want to help our tribal members by creating jobs and opportunities, but it's not just about the tribal members, it's about our entire community. No better way to, you know, to, to improve a family than to, than to give the parents a good paying job, and that's, that's what we're all about. So from our nation's defenses to local residents, Choctaw Defense is building a support system that many will rely upon for years to come. Oklahoma Horizon is now portable. Just subscribe to our weekly podcast, Visit iTunes.com where you can download our show for your listening or viewing convenience. Well, whether you visit for business or pleasure, McAllister's combination of big city amenities and small town charm is evident all around town. And one of the best places to experience the warm hospitality of McAllister's people and enjoy a local fine wine is located right in the heart of downtown. Here's our Courtney Dehoff. Nestled deep in the heart of downtown McAllister, the Whispering Meadows Vineyard and Winery is flowing full of history. It basically housed the Newton Jewelry Store for many, many years. It was built in 1901. The land was bought from the Choctaw and Chickasaw Indians. And then J.J. McAllister, who is what McAllister's named after, actually built the building. And the uh, event center was originally the National Bank, which is now known as the Bank N.A. We've totally renovated and restored both of the buildings back to the original venue, and we love them. People really like the whole atmosphere, the historic aspect of it. Uh, and of course, we're in historic downtown McAllister. Did have to, however, do a little bit more restoration on. Owner the Karen Stobos says the historic winery has quickly become a tourist destination and a local hot spot. And it's just a blend of uh, white grapes. Well, we're off site from the vineyard, and we decided to be in a more um, high traffic area because uh, obviously we're interested in uh, tourism. And with this venue, we're able to combine uh, our experience in winemaking with a wonderful experience in wine tasting, food, and the whole venue of shopping for gourmet food items, for uh, gift items, and that sort of thing fits very well in our downtown historic location. When you're located in the country, which is where our vineyard is, you have to be going to that destination. You have to be driving and going there. 
What's really great about our location is people just kind of happen on to us. We are a destination. We are definitely a destination. We have wind down Fridays on Friday nights with local entertainment. Actually, our mayor is one of our house groups that comes in. Local entertainment isn't the only thing that draws customers from around the country. Turn of the century decor, such as the ceilings and original flooring, are all part of an exquisite restoration that gives the winery a distinctive Oklahoma feel. Um, we have climate controlled this one. We power washed it down and left it as original as possible. Those are all, and you're welcome to walk in there. In addition to 12 varieties of Oklahoma wine, Whispering Meadows offers an assortment of made in Oklahoma food products. I seek out as many Oklahoma based companies as I can find that produce a quality product and as you know we have a wonderful state here and we produce a lot of wonderful products in Oklahoma. An Oklahoma pride reflected throughout the winery all the way down to the labels on the wine. The labels are all done by a local award-winning watercolor artist uh, Paula Anderson and she comes in for special events and autographs uh, the label. She does an original watercolor painting and um, then we take that painting, put it in a JPEG file and of course my label company puts it on our labels. So you have an original piece of her artwork. With unique qualities, gorgeous renovations and a wine and dining experience like none other, Karen believes Whispering Meadows wine will keep flowing as the customers continue to pour in. If you're interested in Oklahoma culture, you can keep up with us throughout the week on the Red Dirt Chronicles blog. Look for our On the Horizon postings on Tuesdays and Fridays and tell us what you think. Well, Webco Manufacturing is at the top of the industrial ladder, so to speak, by making it a bit more pleasant where we rest our bottoms. Well, business is sparking at Webco Manufacturing, making a product known nationwide. Webco Manufacturing is a manufacturer of outdoor uh, furniture, picnic tables and park benches, side amenities. Uh, we manufacture everything out of steel with an uh, outdoor protective coating on it. Rodney Webb is the vice president of Webco Manufacturing and says their materials all originate right here in the United States. We manufacture every piece of furniture that goes through this facility. Uh, we bring in all the raw materials, all the raw materials, all the steel that we buy, we buy right here in the United States. Not only do they purchase local materials, Webb says the company also enlists help from the local Kaimichi Tech Center. The Votech is a very big asset for Webco. Uh, we do a lot of things with the Votech. We partner with them. They do a lot of our uh, OSHA required safety programs. Uh, they do a lot of uh, bid search for us for, uh, through the Corps of Engineers. Uh, so we do a lot of hiring for the welders right out of the welding program. So the Votech here in uh, McAllister area is a very big asset for Webco. An asset that proves invaluable in such a detailed process. We bring all the material in. We either cut it, punch it, notch it. Uh, we have CNC plasma cutters where we're doing uh, different cutout patterns for uh, custom logos. Uh, all our framework that goes underneath the picnic tables, uh, we do our own bending of the material. Then the product goes through a final cleanup stage and a quality assurance before it goes to three different coating areas. And then once it goes from there, it travels over to our shipping department. Once it gets to our shipping department, that's where the product is then packaged up in the boxes, put on the pallets, and then goes up to get ready to load out that ships all across the United States. Helping people around the country enjoy the great outdoors, one sit down at a time. Uh, you'll see our product everywhere. Uh, we've got product we sell to different municipalities, we sell to cities, we sell to government entities, uh, we sell to schools, we sell to homeowner groups, uh, churches, uh, anywhere there's outdoor seating, you're gonna see our product. Well, here in the heart of Oklahoma, you may not expect to find a marina manufacturer, but almost anywhere the water meets the shore, a McAllister-based company named Atlantic Miko hopes to make a sale of the financial kind, 
with more. Here's Keila Kell. Go to most any marina and you might just find a piece of Oklahoma. Atlantic Mico is in the marina business. Uh, we design, manufacture, and install marinas around the country. Paul Durlocker is the president and CEO of Atlantic Mico and says that these giant floating structures are where people park their boats. It's just like a garage for a boat, if you will. And while located in McAllister, Oklahoma, Atlantic Mico's products are built and shipped nationwide. The, the docks are constructed in sections which are then uh, transported and bolted together on location and then floated and anchored in place. And Durlocker says the company's central location is key to their success as well as the quality of workforce available in McAllister. Well, the tech center provides, uh, I guess, uh, they provide us with uh, skilled uh, welding um, welders uh, uh, from the community, uh, which is something we need uh, uh, to keep our manufacturing operation going here locally. Uh, they also have provided us with many different, uh, everything from uh, CPR training uh, to uh, supervisory training. Um, across the years, so uh, we have a pretty close working relationship uh, with the tech center. And with Americans' love of the water, Durlocker says Atlantic Miko is sure to continue to stay afloat. And finally today, while not officially in McAllister, the nearby town of Krebs is known as Oklahoma's Little Italy and is famous for its great cuisine which is why we just couldn't pass up a taste. For many, it's a stop along the way. People will be traveling through and they'll say, oh, well, we were going down to so-and-so, but we really had to make sure that Pete's Place was on our route, you know, because we really, it's, yeah. it's been something that our family and our parents and our grandparents have done for years and years. Pete's Place. Katie Walters is Pete's great-granddaughter and says it's an Italian restaurant with a unique style. Here at Pete's Place, we do things a little differently. Um, when you come in and you want a steak for dinner, there's no side items. You get everything. It's just kind of served family style. You'll get salad and bread and, and just big bowls for everyone to share. And you get big platters of spaghetti, meatball, and ravioli. And it's just endless. And it's just a lot of food. And it's people come here because they can just keep getting more and more. And they eat until they're just completely sick. <laughs> which you can do in the privacy of your own dining room. People like to come here because of the private dining, because it's just kind of, you can bring your children and not have to worry about them. And we have doors on all the private dining rooms. Um, so it's just kind of a home experience. Now, according to Katie's brother, Zach Pritchard, you can eat many made in Oklahoma products at Pete's Place. The restaurant has, has been you know, loyal to, to many made in Oklahoma products. Many of our steaks and, and our other meats are cut um, from Made in Oklahoma company, so we've been very happy with the, the products and, and the quality that Made in Oklahoma has produced. Including the product made right next door, chalk beer. Originally when we started brewing chalk beer, we just had one beer. Chalk beer is just a cloudy and filtered wheat beer that Pete actually got the recipe from the Choctaw Indians. A lot of people think, you know, oh, we want to try some of that chocolate beer. We've heard all about it. And I'm like, no, it's actually, it's a wheat beer from, you know, the, the waving wheat in Oklahoma. A family heritage with their own process. Uh, we begin with, um, with raw grain that comes in. Most of it comes in from Europe. And then we get wheat that comes in from the United States. Um, to, the, to the grain, to the wheat, and to the barley, we add water. Um, at different temperatures to get different amount of extracts, of sugar extracts out of the water. And after that process, we put it into big tanks, into big stainless steel tanks um, called fermenters, and we add yeast. Now the yeast feeds on the sugars, and that produces what we love to drink, the beer. Um, so that's a pretty typical brewing process. A process that produces approximately 5,000 barrels of beer each year and helps bring customers into Pete's Place year after year after year. Next time on Oklahoma Horizon, we head out to Oklahoma's wheat country to see what a difference a year can make. I think I have a picture on my phone from last year cutting this very same field. And we were doing like 
seven miles an hour, eight miles an hour. Because there was nothing to cut. Tell where you've been, where you hadn't been, really. It was that bad. And this year, I'm going, of course, my speed's not exactly right, but one nine, <laughs> you know. Oklahoma's bumper wheat crop on Oklahoma's show for the heartland, Oklahoma Horizon. Well, that is going to wrap up our time here in McAllister. We'll be back in our studios next week. Hope to see you then. Horizon is made possible by the Oklahoma Department of Career and Technology Education and the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping good people grow good things. Copies of today's show are available on our website, okhorizon.com. Thank you for watching Oklahoma Horizon.